to the 10-Minute Coach. Welcome to Christian Chaplains and Coaching, where our chaplains learn that a disciple is someone who has moved from being a recipient of the church's mission to being responsible for the church's mission. What is your mission and your purpose? What goals are you setting for your life? Step three in the process of gospel-centered life coaching is designed to help you create a personal mission statement for your life. R.C. Sproul said, It is one thing to believe Jesus is Lord, but another thing entirely to acknowledge Jesus as Lord. A disciple is a believer who is increasingly worshiping Jesus, who is increasingly being changed by Jesus, and who is increasingly obeying Jesus in all of life while helping others do the same. There are many believers who come to realize who Jesus is, and they call him Lord. But the reality is they spend their life as if, well, Jesus is real, but not actually here. And so they live as if they're in control as Lord over all of the decisions in their life. The truth is either Jesus controls your life or you do. If you acknowledge Jesus as Lord and submit everything to him from now on, then your mission and your purpose becomes aligned with his. As followers of Jesus, we do not get to create a mission statement willy-nilly, any old which way we want. What we get to do is learn from Jesus and Scripture what his plan and his purpose for our life actually is, and then learn to communicate his mission to others as we are applying it to the everyday stuff of our life. As a vision statement describes what you will become, a mission statement describes what you'll accomplish, what you will do. But who is setting the standard? Who assigns the goals, you or Jesus? A gospel-centered mission statement is a description of what you believe God is calling you to accomplish. It's about his plan and purpose for your life. That's the most important thing. The joy that Jesus promised to each of us in John chapter 15 is rooted in being connected to Jesus and actually doing what he says. All of the things that Jesus taught us, if we do them, will bring us joy. All that other stuff brings, well, not joy. What is God's mission for you? Our biblical mission is found and described in two primary passages. The first is found in Matthew 22, verses 37 to 40, which says, And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now, I expect you should know what the Ten Commandments are. The first four define our relationship with God. That's the vertical. And the next six ten, uh, of the Ten Commandments define our relationship with people. That's the horizontal relationship. All of the law of God and the prophets is summarized by two things, our relationship with God and with people. The second scripture is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. We know it as the Great Commission. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now we can summarize the great commandment and the great commission simply as love God, love people, make disciples. But how? Well, our mission becomes a five-fold purpose that we need to understand. The first is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. Love God. God comes first in everything. And the second is love people, love others. Love them as yourself. I submit you cannot love people if you don't love God. If God's love is not in you, people will not be loved by you. Then comes evangelism because people should be attracted to Christ as you go therefore. 
about living your life, they should come to believe in Jesus and become his disciple. How are disciples made then as they come into relationship with you? Well, one is through baptism, which represents a person who is now identifying with Christ, which is followed by a commitment to learn how to live for him. The old person died when they believed and is buried with Christ and then is raised to learn how to live a completely new life in Christ. And that's illustrated beautifully by baptism. And finally, teaching. It implies learning as a student, also teaching others what you have learned and are learning as you make progress. As disciples, we're supposed to teach people to follow Jesus and obey Jesus so they can make progress. But we have to make progress before we can teach others. The word disciple literally means a student or a pupil. Today, there is a difference in how one might understand the word student versus the word disciple. And the difference is this. A student can learn what his teacher knows, but a disciple actually becomes what his master is. So my question is, who is your master? Is it you, or is it the world, or is it Jesus? As evangelical Christians, we need to be guided in our personal mission by the mission of Christ. Essentially, your personal mission statement should say, in your own words, how God's mission will be played out in every area of your life, in every what we call a life account as discussed in the vision statement video. You should check that video out if you haven't done so. But every life account should be affected by your mission. What will mission look like in your relationship with your spouse or with your children? How about your job, in your spiritual disciplines and ministry, in your personal health, in your handling of money and possessions, and in other areas as well? It's perfectly fine. Even we, we even recommend that you have goals for various categories in your life, but these goals must be specific and measurable, and they should always honor Christ, be guided by Scripture, and accomplish His mission in those areas of your life. For example, you can say, I want to lose weight. But that's not measurable, and it's not specific, nor is it necessarily guided by Scripture. It would be better to say, Scripture teaches me to be healthy in this life and to learn self-control. And so I acknowledge that I am overweight and I commit to losing 15 pounds by the beginning of summer. Well, that's specific and it's measurable and it's guided by the Word of God as all goals should be when you're creating a mission statement. So this is where you start. Ask yourself this question. What is God saying to you right now about what he wants you to do and what are we going to do about it? Note the two components to the question. The first, what is God saying to you? That's your call. That's your missional purpose. Do you know what it is? And the second is, who is we? Who are the people who will join you on the mission? Spend time in your mission and your purpose to understand it better. Spend lots of time in personal prayer and reflection before you start writing out your mission statement. Seek God's help. Seek the help of others that are speaking into your life. God wants you to do what he wants you to do. So listen to him. Submit to Jesus in every area of your life. At Christian Chaplains and Coaching, we are serious about applying the gospel to every area of our life. As a gospel-centered life coach, it is my desire to help you create a personal mission statement that aligns your life with the will of God. This step in the coaching process will put you on the right path, turn control over to Jesus as Lord, and help you set the right goals for your life. Now stay tuned to the 10-Minute Coach. The next video in this series will cover core value statements so that you can understand why you do the things you do. Please hit like on this video and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to the 10-Minute Coach. Won't you please support our ministry? Your donations will provide scholarships for chaplains and life coaching candidates who are in financial need. We are serious about the gospel and we hope that you will join us on our mission.